ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ ಉನ್ಮೀಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಹಿಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದ ಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಸ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಏ ವಚ ಪತಿತಾನಂ ಪಾವನಿಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ್ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ್ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ So, I hope you're able to see my screen. Kento 8, Chapter 3, Text 1. Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. It is described that by reading, hearing, chanting, remembering, speaking, singing the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, our consciousness gets cleansed. and that's even if you don't understand what it means because by default sound has its own power like when you hear uh, the honking sound coming from a car it aut- automatically gives a certain emotion when you hear very beautiful playing of the flute or the violin that relaxes and gives us another emotion in the heart just by the sound the sound the alarm clock or let's say the alarm in the iphone wakes us up from sleep just by just by the sound right when we are in deep sleep and if there's some construction sound it sends shivers down our spine if they are like kind of cutting or crushing metal or stones similarly you can see if you just stand under a tree it's filled with birds and you just clap your hands even if they don't know where the sound the source is coming in out of fear they fly off so fear joy disgust all of these emotions can be seen just by the sound just by its sound when someone appreciates us we feel nice when someone criticizes us we feel not so nice right depending on our consciousness sometimes when we are criticized we feel good also because we see the compassion and the love that that person has in that feedback so sound by default creates emotions this is a known fact by hearing sound vibration there are emotions that are automatically generated in the heart we can see the power of sound spiritually speaking we understand that brahma ji created this world by the sound of krishna's flute it was krishna's flute sound which impregnated the knowledge of creation in the heart of brahma that's from the spiritual side and from the material side you can see that the the scientists they talk about the big bang so the creation again not just of emotions in the heart but even the whole creation by default spiritually speaking it's the sound vibration of krishna's flute and materially speaking materially speaking scientifically speaking it is the big bang so which is still sound you can see sound is so intrinsic sound <clears throat> is all that exists in ether you can't smell ether you can't see ether <laughs> you can't feel ether but you can just hear the sound of ether and that's all and that's one in- intricate intrinsic part that exists through all elements sound exists in earth like if somebody you know thumps and stamps and jumps on the floor you can see the sound you can hear the sound right from the floor that's there in earth water sound travels through water sound travels through fire even the the splitting splatting sound that we hear in a fire flame that sound air and ether air in the sense that you can hear the sound of let's say the the traveling train or the the aircraft and ether in outer space so it's sound which is so fundamental um through all elements 
through material science, through spiritual principles, stirring in emotions in the heart. And all of this is material sound, by the way. It's all material sound. Now, what to speak if the sound starts becoming spiritual? Just like the sound of an alarm clock can wake us up from material sleep, the sound of Srimad Bhagavatam can wake us up from spiritual sleep. Material sleep means when we are fast asleep and we have no clue what's happening around. But spiritual sleep means we are wide awake materially and we know where we are, but we are sleeping as far as our relationship with Krishna is concerned. We don't see God. We don't believe in Him. We don't see His hand in circumstances. We either glorify someone for, for what they have done to us or we criticize someone for what they have done to us. But we are completely oblivious and blind to Krishna's hand behind circumstances. So that is spiritual sleep. So just like material sound wakes us up from material sleep that we are every night, spiritual sound vibration like the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam wakes us up from spiritual sleep. And that's exactly what our problem is. We are asleep. Jiva jago, jiva jago, gaura chandra bole, kotha nidra jayamaya pishachira kole. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur doesn't say jiva jago, jiva jago. I mean, as the words of Mahaprabhu, he, he's saying, oh, spirit soul, wake up. Right? He's not saying, oh, oh those spirit souls sleeping on their bed at night, <laughs> fast asleep materially, please wake up. He does, he's not saying that. To all those sitting in the Bhagavatam class who are wide awake, to them he's saying, please wake up, which means spiritual sound, vibration, waking us up from spiritual sleep. So these verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, they are so powerful that even if we don't know what they mean, if we properly in a metric, uh, rhythmic, systematic, organized manner, not uh, wishy-washy, not haphazard, but proper splitting of the words and proper pronunciation, if you chant them, it will give the desired results. How much more if you know what they mean? And how much more if you actually resonate and feel what they're actually feeling. So there are three levels in which the Shastra deals with. The Shastra goes onto the ear as entertainment. You can either entertain yourself with the story of Gajendra and it's a wow moment of wow, it's amazing. Even if an animal calls out to the Lord, the Lord will come there. All said and done, wonderful story. It doesn't happen every day at National Geographic or Animal Planet, but it's a good story, right? So it's entertaining to the ear. Now, if you get the lessons out, like... Even if somebody is an animal, they call out to Krishna with all their heart, Krishna will come. We are all like Gajendra, another lesson. And the crocodile here represents, let's say, Corona, the COVID-19 pandemic, or the crocodile may represent emotional strain in family life. The crocodile may represent physical problems. The crocodile may represent economic, financial problems. The crocodile may represent fight with the in-laws <laughs> or the crocodile may represent uh, legal problems, whatever it may be, accidents, anything unfortunate. So when we as Gajendra living in the opulence of our material comfort, go into the pond of this world to drink the sweet water of joy, you see metaphorical explanations coming up. Um, when the crocodile, unseen, unheard, unexpected crocodiles of reversals come and catch all of us and we struggle and kind of fight to, to the best of our might to get out and we are not able to and we look out to our friends and family to help us and just like Gajendra tried, none of them helped. A sense of detachment comes in our heart that ultimately I'm like Gajendra. I may request them for help. They may not come when I need it because they themselves are Gajendras caught up in their own crocodiles. And then just like Gajendra did, I must call out to Krishna and Krishna will come if I call out with all my heart. So there's one level of Shastra where it deals with the year. And then the lesson, so there's entertainment for the year. And then there is enrichment for the mind with the lessons. But when you practice them and call out in that manner, and when you actually feel the reciprocation of the law, then it's no longer just entertaining or enriching. It goes from entertainment to enrichment to enlightenment. These are the three stages in which the Shastra work. They give us the entertaining storyline, 
they give the enriching uh, lessons out of it. And when practiced and experienced, it lights up the soul with enlightenment, with realization. So we can see in, uh, in this section of the pastime of Gajendra, which is in the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Actually, this, this section is very dear to my, my heart also. I'll tell you exactly why. One time in Sri Brindavan Dham, I asked my Guru Maharaj, Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj, that Guru Maharaj, out of all the prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are so many prayers. There's prayers by Prahlad Maharaj, prayers by Dhruva Maharaj, by Kunti Devi, by Uttara, by Mani Griv Nalakuvir, by Brahma, by the wives of Kaliya, <laughs> by the Gopis. So many wonderful prayers by Kunti, by Bhishma. So, of course, I didn't name all of this. Guru Maharaj knows all of this. <laughs> I've heard all of this from him. So I said, of all the prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we don't have time to chant many, which is that set of prayers that we should chant regularly. And before even I completed the question, Srila Guru Maharaj said, Gajendra Stuti, which means prayers of Gajendra. And I find it to be very uh, relevant that this is in the first three chapters of the eighth canto the story of Gachendra. In fact, the first four chapters of which the first chapter describes the, the chronological order of different kings, etc. in the Manvantara. But chapter 2, 3 and 4 of the 8th canto deal with the story of Gajendra, where 2 gives the background history, the 4th, the 2nd gives the background history, the 4th gives uh, the post offering of prayers. But the 3rd chapter from text 2 to 29 deals with 28 beautiful prayers of Gajendra. So I that that as the introduction, we will start. We will read the five verses straight. In the interest of time, I will just be reading the verse and the translation um, because there are five verses in this elaborate um, commentary to all of them. And then I will try to comment for a few minutes. And then if there are questions or reflections, we can take it at the end. Okay. Shri Badarai ni Ruvacha Evam Vyavasito Buddha Samadhaya Mano Ridi Jajapa Paramam Japyam Pragjan Manyanu Shikshitam. Translation Shri Shukadev Goswami continued Thereafter, the king of elephants, Gajendra fixed his mind in his heart with perfect intelligence and chanted a mantra which he had learned in his previous birth as Indradyumna and which he remembered by the grace of Krishna. So this is very, very important. This um, verse talks about the importance of chanting Japa. Many times devotees ask this question, is it okay if I just do Kirtan? <laughs> and if I just skip Japa, because Japa is kind of uh, more challenging to sit in one place and just repeat a mantra without any melody or tune and without any instruments and all by ourselves. But Kirtan is comparatively easier. Uh, sure, they are all wonderful means of focusing our mind on Krishna. But here it is described, how did Gajendra chant? How did Gajendra chant? In his past life, it is described, Vyavasito Buddhya. So there are some devotees waiting in the waiting room. So maybe somebody can take care of uh, admitting them. Would that be okay? So, Brajapilasini uh, Mataji, would that be okay with you? Um, I think you're on mute, Mataji. Sorry. I'm actually adding all of them. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. Um, so here it is described that Gajendra chanted Japa. How did he chant? Vyavasito buddhya. With intelligence. And samadhaya manoridhi. His mind was focused. His intelligence was focused. This is... Very interesting. When you chant Japa, the buddhi must be focused in the sense that we must be convinced that by repeating this mantra, I will get the goal that I want. If I want Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan and I want to serve them in the Nikunjas of Vrindavan, I should be convinced that by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, I will get there. This is buddhi. Now, how do we get that uh, firm conviction? How do we get that conviction that by chanting this mantra, we will get there? We will get that conviction by Reading books glorifying the holy name. We have to read books which glorify the holy name. Uh, the Art of Chanting Hare Krishna by Mahanidhi Swami is a very beautiful book. 
um, the Nectarian Ocean of the Holy Name by Sachinandan Maharaj. It's a very beautiful book again. Uh, the Japa Reform Notebook by Satsuru Maharaj is another beautiful guide. And of course, the best, the favorite one that I have is Sri Namamrita. It's a compilation of all the quotes by Srila Prabhupada. It's quite thick a book and it's very entertaining. It's called Sri Namamrita. You can maybe even take a screenshot of this and search for it online. You may, you will really benefit. We all will benefit by reading that book. It's a compilation of different quotes by Srila Prabhupada on Japa. So that's how, that's step number one, how we have our intelligence fine-tuned with, with uh, faith in the process. Another thing that happens is we have to uh, associate with people who chant sincerely. Therefore, when there are Japa workshops, there are places like Shachinandan Maharaj keeps doing it again and again. Mah Mahatma Prabhu does it. So many wonderful Vaishnavas do it. So by associating with Vaishnavas who chant Japa properly, our faith in the process will better. Also by seeing effects. You can see when Prabhupada started preaching the glories of the holy name, uh, he went straight to the hippies <laughs> in New York City. And they had no past history of chanting any mantra. And they were living off streets. Um, and they were actually eating beef. But by chanting japa, they even came to a point of not eating onion and garlic. They were at a point where they were drinking alcohol. But by chanting japa, they came to a point where they were not even drinking tea and coffee. And they were not even wearing clothes properly. They came to a point where they were teaching others how to wear sari and dhoti and, and kurta and tilak and kantimala. So how did this transformation, how did this change take place? It's by the chanting of the holy name. And if it worked on them, and it has worked in the past, and it works in the future, and it's working on many at the present, it will definitely work on me. So this is buddhi. We have to read more on the holy name. We have to associate with Vaishnavas who chant the holy name. We have to hear classes on the holy name. We have to. By that, what happens? We, our uh, mood of confidence that this is the process. This mantra will take me there. Like, like for example, uh, when, you, um, when you see the life of personalities like Sri Padayindra Prabhu, who sat on one tile in Sri Vrindavan Dham and chanted one mantra, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, for 25 years, the same service, the same mantra with the same clothing and the same place and the same tile. And you can see the revolution that he created. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all over the place came to Sri Vrindavan Dham by the power of his chanting of the holy name. Sometimes we see that we travel from place to place on the pretext of preaching and, and we can't even preach to ourselves properly. <laughs> And here is Sri Padayandra Prabhu. He never left Vrindavan. Never. He didn't come to, you know, he didn't go anywhere. <laughs> but the power of his chanting was such. He was sitting in one place. And it was almost like when you throw some grains on the, on, the, on the field, on the countryside, you can see birds come in big, huge numbers to eat those grains. So Sri Padayandra Prabhu was throwing in the grains of the holy name, pure chanting of the holy name. And all the bird-like devotees, they came in jumping to Sri Vrindavan Dham to taste those grains. So what was it that helped Sripad Aindra Prabhu keep going, doing with the same service against the heat and cold of Vrindavan? You know, it's not like Aindra Prabhu was living in a comfortable mansion at Beverly Hills and, you know, just telling everyone, you chant, you chant. No, he was actually doing it. Heat, cold. And, and at the time when Aindra Prabhu came to Vrindavan, well, even drinking water was not available. Now Vrindavan is like, you know, you can have pizzas and you can have MVT and <laughs> whatnot. I mean, you can have everything. It's like comfortable place. You can have the most luxury apartments and, um, you know, you have Govindas and you can, there's no problem. But when Sripad Aindra Prabhu moved to Vrindavan uh, in the 90s, uh, in fact, in the 80s, he started the 24-hour Kirtan in 1986. You know, you had to go out to get water in extreme conditions of uh, climate. And Aindra Prabhu was on the top of the Gurukul building. He didn't even have a ceiling fan or to speak of a table fan or an air conditioner or a cooler. He would have prickly heat on his back. Many times Aindra Prabhu would say that when I would rest and keep my forehead on my hand in the afternoon for like a 30 minute nap, I would wake up to a pool of sweat on my hand. So my question is somebody born in Virginia in the United States of America and serving in Chicago and DC and Baltimore 
and New York, not to forget Radha Govinda in New York, that Indra Prabhu would personally um, decorate and worship. He left everything and lived in Brindavan, the life of extreme renunciation and extreme austerity. But what is that thing that kept him going? What was that, what was that taste that he was tasting anyway? That was chanting of Hare Krishna. So it's not that the holy name can't give. It's just that I am not receiving enough at this point. I don't have a container. And if I do, it's filled with the holes of my own wrongdoings. I am criticizing Vaishnavas. I am gossiping. I'm doing things which are detrimental to progress. So this is the first point. This verse. Vyavasito buddhya. To succeed on the path of Japa. The first thing is we must have buddhi. Very sharp intelligence and conviction. That this process will work for me. That will happen by reading books on the holy name, by hearing Harikatha on the holy name, by associating with sadhus who chant the holy name, and by reflecting upon how Srila Prabhupada got this whole revolution going, how Sri Padayendra Prabhu had this whole revolution going. I, I, I'll ask you a very simple question. We've all seen His Grace Madhava Prabhu lead Kirtan, right? Sadhu Sangha retreat and so many Kirtan Mela retreats. You tell me what is he most um, appreciated and most glorified and most um, worshipped for. It's his absorption in chanting. He takes like this one mantra and goes on for three hours. The same mantra, the same melody for three hours. And now, honestly, from my perspective, if I see, I don't have that taste. I need like a change in the melody. I need like an upbeat kirtan. <laughs> I need some change to keep me going. But he has his eyes shut and he's like sitting like a deity for three hours. So there's definitely something that he is tasting, something that he finds relishable in the holy name, which I am not able to. It's not that the holy name can't give. It's just that I'm not tasting it. So this is buddhya by analyzing. Now, once we are convinced that by repeating this mantra, I will have all good fortune. Samadhaya mano ridhi. Then you have to give your mind to this process. How do you give your mind to this process? When we chant, we chant. We don't do anything else. We are repeating the mantra. We are hearing the mantra. We are chanting with all our heart. Srila Guru Maharaj was once explaining. Uh, it's a... Please don't take it literally. It's, a, <laughs> it's an example given to give us a hint of how serious and sincere one should be. Srila Guru Maharaj is saying that when we chant our first 16 rounds, we should sit down and chant like a statue. No moving. He said, even if everyone comes to us and they, they kind of proclaim that, oh dear devotee, huh? earth is about to... Um, sink. <laughs> There's going to be an earthquake. Everything is ending. Everyone is going to die. And you're the only one who can save us. <laughs> Srila Guru Maharaj said, still your duty is to sit there like a statue and chant the holy name. Don't care about this. Krishna will take care. He said, Krishna created this. So Krishna will protect. You don't worry. Your duty is to sit there like a statue and chant the holy name. Hmm. Because when we introspect, we see that there is no focus while chanting. There are a few things that are very important. We should sit in a place which is pure and not a noisy place, not a place where people are walking back and forth, talking loudly, a lo lot of music going on, somebody's knocking at the door, phones are ringing. You can't focus like that. So therefore you see in the yoga studios, they have a concept of sacred space, create a sacred space. It's not a new concept. It's just a new term. Sacred space is a new term, but Traditionally, you can see in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna uses the term Shuchaudeshe, which means situate yourself in a pure, pristine, clean, favorable environment to chant. The place must be clean. If the place is dirty, like my, my room at this moment, filled with a lot of books, <laughs> a lot of paper, um, I have to set it up. I promise after the class, I will do something about it. But <laughs> chanting must be done in a place which is uh, more clean um, so that we can we feel more relaxed at a time when we are focused, not when we are pulled with 10 different other things. 
actually in our community here there's one mataji who chants um, very nicely i have uh, seen her chant even if her child comes and kind of pulls her to the side and says you know like ask for attention she doesn't open her eyes she's still sitting and chanting and even the child kind of knows by now that my mother is sitting and repeating a mantra so if i go and pull her you know hand for attention i i'm not going to get anything so even the child knows that um his grace adi gadadhar prabhu sets the example here he starts chanting at 3:30 in the morning 3:30 in the morning and he chants till he used to chant till 7:30 straight four hours um but now he chants till about 6:15 6:20 and then reading of shrimad bhagavatam etc and he sits in one asan front of the camera eyes closed chanting nothing else even when he's on call as a doctor and the phones are ringing um you know he prioritizes his chanting so time place mood we are repeating the mantra the mind will say just stop do something else no we just want to do that that's mind buddhi means conviction that this mantra will help this process works and i will get my goal now mana means focusing now sometimes people complain oh my mind is not focusing when i'm chanting no problem continue to repeat the mantra continue to repeat sometimes devotees ask this question will it work after all is it actually going to work even if my mind is not there is it going to work so shila guru maharaj gives another example <laughs> he says that you know in india you have this concept of uh uh watchman is a security guard right you have these different uh, housing cooperatives cooperative houses housing societies you know like different buildings and you have like a security guard who's guarding away from gu- guarding the, the the residents from let's say thieves and intruders etc so shila guru maharaj explains many times these uh, security guards what do they do at night they are awake because they have to protect but how do they keep themselves awake sometimes they are listening to music sometimes they're reading newspaper sometimes they're on a on a phone call talking to their wife or something so shila guru maharaj explains doesn't matter what they're doing they get paid for being awake at night because they're doing their duty so similarly krishna is not going to worry about where your mind is going the fact that you're awake and doing your duty of repeating the mantra you get your pay <laughs> just like that security guard even if he's distracted even if he's on a phone call even if he's reading newspaper even if he's watching tv even if he's just uh, you know walking around and then and just killing time maybe but just for the fact that he's awake at night with a stick in his hand ready to be on guard if there's an intruder he's ready to shoot them away just for that he gets his pay so similarly the fact that we are sitting and chanting japa even if our mind goes to a million different things no problem <laughs> no problem krishna will give us krishna will give us the pay krishna will give us the pay the fact that we are repeating the mantra you don't have to worry and how much more if there is focus in the section of ajamil i want to i'll actually screen share that so it'll it'll make sense just give me a minute this is uh, do let me know if you're able to see it okay so it's going to be i think chap canto 6 chapter 2 text 49 yes this is the one i hope everyone's able to see the screen 6249 yeah so in this section you can see there are five things that are mentioned i'll chant the verse first and you can all um, take note of this it's 6249 मृयमाणो हरेर्नाम गृणन पुत्रोपचारित अजामिलोप्य गाधाम किम उत श्रद्धया गृणन सो द ट्रांसलेशन देन वी विल ऑफ कोर्स स्पीक समथिंग इन एनालिसिस ऑफ दैट वाइल सफरिंग एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ अजामिल चैंटेड द होली नेम ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड ऑल्दो द चैंटिंग वाज डायरेक्टेड टुवर्ड्स हिज सन ही नेवरदेलेस रिटर्न्ड बैक होम बैक टू गॉड इट therefore if one carefully and inoffensively chants the holy name where is the doubt that he will return back to godhead so five points to be mentioned here 
and all of you can take note of this. Mriya Mano, when did Ajamil chant the holy name? At the time of death. Hmm? Ajamil chanted the holy name at the time of death. When do devotees chant the holy name? All their life. <laughs> Ajamil chanted the holy name only at the time of death. And still he got what he got. When do devotees chant the holy name? They chant the holy name all their life. Okay, this is point number one. Second point. Whom did Ajamil call? Narayana. Narayana is the lord of Vaikuntha. Whom do devotees in the International Society of Krishna Consciousness call out? Hare Krishna. They call out to Radha Krishna in Golok. So if Ajamil calls out at the time of death and devotees call out all their life, whose situation is better? Devotees of the Lord. right? Second, if Ajamil is calling out to the Lord of Vaikuntha Vishnu and devotees are of uh, Iskon are calling out to the names of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan, so their chances of going back home, back to God, it, back to Goloka Vrindavan is higher. Now third, Grinan means to chant. Whom did he call out to? Putra Upacharitam. The word Putra means son. So Ajamil called out to his son. Whom do devotees call out to? They call out to Krishna. They don't call out to their son. They call out to the Supreme Lord himself. Does that make sense? So point number one, Ajamil called out only at the time of death. Devotees call out all their life, every day in Japa. Second, Ajamil called out to the Lord of Vaikuntha. Devotees call out to the Lord of Goloka, Radha and Krishna. And here, Harer Nama, he called out only to Narayana. But devotees call out to Radha and Krishna. Third, Ajamil called out only to his son. But devotees, when they chant Japa, they don't call out to their son. They call out to Krishna himself. Hmm? This is third point. Fourth point, Ajamila Api. Agadhama. Even Ajamil went back home back to Godhead. So the word api here refers to also. What does that mean? Although Ajamil was so sinful, he also went back home back to Godhead. How are devotees? Are they sinful? They follow four regulative principles. <laughs> so they are free from the four regulative, uh, they, from the sins that Ajamil committed. I'll quickly recap. First, Ajamil called out only at the time of death. Devotees call out all their life. Second, Ajamil called out to Narayana without Lakshmi. And that too in Vaikuntha. But devotees call out to Radha and Krishna together in Golok. Third, Ajamil called out to his son. Devotees call out to Krishna. Fourth, Ajamil was very sinful. Devotees are pure because they follow the four regulative principles. And fifth, Ajamil called out helplessly without faith. And devotees call out with a lot of hope and with a lot of faith. These are the five aspects of active japa. First, to call out every day. Second, to call out with the internal potency, which is Radha and Krishna. We should always chant together. If someone is chanting the name of Ram, they should chant with the name of Mother Sita. Sita and Ram, both. If somebody is chanting the name of Narayana, they should chant the name of Narayana with Lakshmi. And if somebody is chanting the name of Krishna, you should chant the name of Krishna with Radha. So that's the second point. Very important. Third, instead of calling out to our son, we should actually call out to Krishna. Fourth, not be sinful like Ajamal. We follow the four regulative principles, which cause physical, external, and internal uh, purity. And fifth, Ajamal called out without faith, but devotees call out with faith. So we can see back to the words that we were discussing. Of course, I came to this because of the importance of um, chanting Japa here. So we can see Shukadev Goswami is saying that when Gajendra called out, his buddhi was in the right place. And we discussed how we can do that. Second, his mind, he was calling out with all his heart and mind. And how can we do that? Hmm? By following these five principles with faith, calling out every day, calling out to the Supreme Lord. In fact, Namacharya Haridas Thakur, he says, Damstri Damstra Hatom Lecho Haram Iti Puna Punaha Uktvapi Mukti Maapnoti Kim Puna Shraddhaya Grunhan. What does that mean? He, he gives the example. This is the, the greatest chanter of the holy name, <laughs> Haridas Thakur speaking. 
he says that once upon a time there was uh, a, a muslim uh, person who was out in the woods for for some work and somehow he was being chased by a wild boar a wild pig hmm? a wild hog and the verse goes as dumsh tree which means that animal which has sharp tusk dumsh tree what did that boar do damstra ahatom lecho with the sharp tusk with the sharp teeth the wild pig attacked this lecha this person and what did he do he kind of used a swear word in arabic his language to shoo the animal away he said haram haram which means abominable you abominable animal get away but haridas thakur says haram iti punaha punaha again and again he was saying haram and by then what happened the boar pierced his tusk through the body of this man and he died haridas thakur says uktwa bi mukti mapnoti when this man died the residents of vaikuntha came there and he said well, who who are you and who called you and <laughs> you called us how did i call you you called out to the lord of vaikuntha he said no i i just said haram which means abominable so they said yes you said haram but our lord is so kind and merciful he heard haram haram oh my lord ram oh my lord ram. so by saying this he instructed us to come and take you so haridas thakur says uktwa pi mukti mapnoti just by saying this if one can get liberated kim punah shraddha yagrana then what to speak when the mind is absorbed and one is calling out with all one's heart Shila Prabhupada says one should chant japa like the crying of a child for its mother. We hear that so many times but now how do we practically do it? Hmm. Sometimes people say I have no taste for chanting japa. Yes, taste will not be there. <laughs> If taste was there then we wouldn't be here in this world. We would be in that world, right? So before ruchi comes nishtha. First to be fixed that I will chant. To sit and nice peacefully sit and chant japa. to constantly chant as much as possible whenever we have time we should put our hand into the beat bag and keep chanting we should keep chanting as much as possible hmm. how many of us have heard of his grace anand vrindavan prabhu in mumbai hmm. such a great inspiration right he inspires everyone to chant more japa and devotees in huge numbers they get on the call and they are chanting japa with him sometimes even 120 rounds and even 190 rounds and 200 rounds even on a zoom call it's unheard of in the history of mankind that people sitting in different parts of the world connect through zoom and they zoom in to the essence of shastra which is chanting japa and for 24 hours with their video on they are chanting so once when i had the fortune of meeting his grace anand vrindavan prabhu's wife tulsi mata ji she was telling me प्रभु जी जैसे क्लास में है ना घर में भी वैसे ही है विच मीन्स द वे ही इज इन क्लासेस द एंथुजियाजम दैट ही हैज इन इज क्लासेस इज हाउ ही इज इवन एट होम शी वॉज मैंशनिंग दैट इवन इफ वी आर टॉकिंग समथिंग एल्स ही विल कम आउट एंड एंड ही विल हियर फॉर सम टाइम एंड इफ ही अंडरस्टैंड दैट वेल दिस इज जस्ट अ जेनरिक टॉक ही विल इमिजिएटली गो इन सैड एंड ब्रिंग हिज क्लिकर और काउंटर and he's standing with everyone and ta- everyone's talking and you can he can hear the the clicking sound because he is chanting japa and mata ji was mentioning that once i asked him like why do you do this and he said all of you are chanting uh, all of you are speaking but this is not going to help me at the time of death <laughs> i'm going to die alone and i have to practice focusing <laughs> as prabhu ji everybody knows is you know very sharp with laser beam focus so such devotee six is constantly chanting i'll give you another example one very senior vaishnav in mumbai his son so this devotee is a very very um, enthusiastic chanter and preacher of the holy names he himself chants 80 90 100 rounds and whomever he inspires they also chant chanting 20 30 40 50 64 80 <laughs> and rams so that prabhuji was telling me look at this this is a very fascinating story please listen to this it's unfortunate but it's spiritually very inspiring 
So his son, this Prabhuji's son was driving a car and he, you know, he was driving through, I think, Punjab, Haryana border. And um, he had a sannyasi next to him and they were going for some preaching program. And suddenly there was a truck, you know, in, in Punjab, there are a lot of trucks that keep moving. And many of the times the truck drivers, they're drunk, right? So they are in their own world. So he was driving the car and somehow a truck driver who was drunk uh, on the truck, on the wheels, he um, banged against their car. And uh, this devotee had head-on collision with the car. And there was a pool of blood all over. He was a brahmach- He's a brahmachari. And this whole jaw got hit against the steering wheel and it came down, you know, with teeth broken. And, and the sannyasi was also badly hurt. He hurt his hip, etc. So when he got up and he saw this devotee, this devotee was drenched in blood because of this accident. But guess what the devotee was doing? He was sitting there with a broken jaw, with teeth all out, blood all over the place, maybe a couple of broken bones as well. And he was sitting and chanting Japa. At, the t- at that time of the accident. And the sannyasi said, shouldn't we call the, the doctors? And the devotee said, I didn't plan the accident. Krishna did. So let him take the responsibility of bringing in the doctors. My duty is to call him. His duty is to protect me. <laughs> so the, the point I'm, of course, the devotee was later rushed to Delhi, Ames, and a lot of surgery, and then even back in Mumbai, and he's safe and healthy now. But the point is, such devotees with such focus exist in this world to constantly chant as much as possible. Life is ticking. Time is ticking. We don't know when we are going to die. This COVID got the reality out of us. People in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, age was no bar. Left, right, center, people were dying. Without oxygen cylinders, without beds at the hospital. So this is what we see in this verse. It is described that Gajendra, when he called out, there was buddhi complete conviction that if I call out, Krishna will come. When Draupadi called, Krishna came. When Pandavas called, Krishna came. When Prahlad Maharaj called, Krishna came. When Dhruva Maharaj called, Krishna came. Gajendra is thinking, when I call, why won't Krishna come? Yatra gayanti madbhaktaha tatra tishthami narada. Krishna has said, where my devotees call out my names, I am there. Hari vaset, sada vaset tatra, yatra bhagavata jana, gayanti bhakti bhavena hare name vakevalam. Nilkantha Goswami has said, Krishna lives in that place where devotees chant his names. So this conviction. And when we chant, trying to chant properly, without multitasking, sitting and chanting, repeating the names. Even if we don't feel anything, no problem. The names are working. They are working. Whether you understand or you know, you don't understand what the chemical composition of the capsule is, you just put it in your mouth, it's going to work. Even if you don't know what, what, how it is made and what the ingredients are, even prasadam for that matter, you just eat. You may not, like for me, I, I don't know anything about cooking. I just know how to eat nicely three times a day. That's all that I know. <laughs> I don't know how to cook. But body is nourished. Even if I don't know what is added, which vegetable is added first and what's the cooking time of this vegetable in comparison to that vegetable. I don't know any of those intricacies, but it's working because I'm just accepting with faith. If capsules are working like that, if prasadam is working like that, why not the holy name? Even if we don't know anything, just repeat. And uh, maybe somebody can take care of taking off these lines so that... uh, Children, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's some child who's trying to cancel out and play around. <laughs> um, so that's the second point. Now, please listen to the third point. Jajapa Paramam Japyam. Gajendra in his past life. Prak Janmani. Hmm? Why did Gaj- Gajendra succeed? Shukdev Goswami is giving these three reasons. In fact, four reasons. He was convinced about the process. He called out with all his heart. Third, Paramam Japyam. He chanted a powerful mantra. Paramam Japyam. For us, the 
paramam japyam is hare krishna mahamantra that is the hare krishna mahamantra is the paramam japyam it's the best mantra that we have sometimes devotees say can we chant any name of the lord yes sure we can chant any name of the lord no problem but the kali santarana upanishad has said something very interesting kali santarana upanishad says that the soul is covered by 16 layers every soul that is all of us are covered by 16 layers of material covering what are those 16 layers five working senses five knowledge acquiring senses five elements earth water fire air ether that's 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15 and the 16th is mind so these 16 elements cover the soul and this is straight from kali santaran upanishad i am not making it up brahma ji is telling narada muni 16 coverings to the soul and therefore brahma ji says to break through all this covering you need a mantra with 16 names and that is the hare krishna maha mantra so hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare iti shodashakam nam nam kali kalmasha nashanam nata paratro paya sarva vedeshu drishyate kali santarana upanishad has described brahma ji has told narada muni that these 16 names of the hare krishna maha mantra they tear open the 16 layers of the soul and the swarup comes out the original constitutional form but for that what we have to do anu shikshitam we have to practice we have to practice and shukdev goswami says prak prak means past janmani means life in his past life jajap he who gajendra he did japa of paramam japyam great chanting prabhupada in the purport he writes apart from the hare krishna mahamantra one should also regularly chant the brahma samhita prabhupada gives three options he says chanting of hare krishna mahamantra in this purport you can read it hare krishna mahamantra prabhupada says brahma samhita and third shila prabhupada mentions narsimha prayers namaste narasimha ya prahlad ahlad adaini these three prayers prabhupada has quoted in the purport so that's paramam japyam and anushikshitam we have to practice prak janmani what has been practiced in past life will come handy lifetime after lifetime please note gajendra in his past life was king indra dyumna who was serving his deity because of a curse from a sadhu and we won't have the time now to get into that how he became gajendra you can read that in the fourth chapter that's given the chapter after this that suspense is revealed how agastya muni oops <laughs> agastya muni cursed and so many wonderful details so in the previous life you can see that gajendra was king indradyumna he was a great devotee and he was worshiping the deities and because of a curse he became an animal so the devotee forgot the deity but the deity did not forget the devotee <laughs> how wonderful we forget krishna in this life you chant hare krishna next life you may forget him but the deity in front of whom you have chanted hare krishna will never forget you and when the time of difficulty comes he sits on your tongue and he says the gajendra's prayers which gajendra asking indradyumna to chant it now please tell me is it possible for an elephant to chant sanskrit prayers calling out to the lord and the lord gives a vaikuntha on the back of garuda and comes for an elephant it's generally not seen but it's not impossible if the lord wants to do it good the elephant can do it you can see an elephant do it but if krishna sits on the tongue of the elephant and does it then it's possible then it is possible absolutely it is possible but for that why would krishna do it unless we have practiced it ourselves so next life and the life after and the life after in case we don't go back home back to god it if you practice sincerely this life krishna will never forget us krishna never forgets us when putana came to krishna and krishna was squeezing her life air out putana was crying she said just let go just leave me leave me leave me if i knew you were god i would have never come to you i just thought you were a baby shri padhari suri ji writes shila guru maharaj explains that putana was told by krishna or or putana was telling krishna let go leave me she was telling that to that lord who only knows to hold 
He doesn't know to leave. If somebody comes and holds on to Krishna, Krishna holds that person forever. He will never let go. Even if you say you leave me, it's not Krishna's nature. He just lets go. And Srila Guru Maharaj explains that when Putana was flying in the sky, Krishna was on top of her. And Putana was trying to push Krishna down from the height, thinking that the baby will get scared of the height. But Krishna's love for Putana was way more than his fear of fall. Srila Guru Maharaj gives the example of when you travel, sometimes you have these big bags, right? You check in those bags and you have like a small lock onto them. And the bags travel from India to Dubai and Dubai to, let's say, you know, Boston or wherever in America. You know, you're flying Emirates, let's say, <laughs> or any of Etihad, wherever. So the bags go long distance. So when you come, let's say in Europe or America or Australia, you see the bag, the bag is there and that lock is also there. So Guru Maharaj explains, Putana was like that bag. She was flying from one place to another and Krishna was like that little lock who didn't let go. <laughs> he was there. He was there. Krishna never forgets the devotee. Krishna can never let go. Prag Janmani Anushikshitam. Gajendra forgot Krishna, but Krishna did not forget him. Krishna sat on his tongue and made him chant the mantra that he himself chanted in his previous life. Gajendra, as King Indradyumna, chanted these prayers in his past life to the deity. And the deity had heard so many times. Now when his devotee was in the time of difficulty, the deity spoke back all these prayers as Paramatma and it came out through the mouth of Gajendra. Jajapa paramam japyam prag janmani anushikshitam. So these things, these four things we have to note in today's discussion. Conviction about the process of chanting, through reading, through hearing, through association of devotees who have that faith, and practically seeing the revolution that the chanting process can bring in. Second, when we chant, being focused and chanting as much as possible, with this intensity that we don't know when, how much more, how many more years we have in life. And chanting is a very simple form of service. To serve Krishna in other ways, you need something else. You need like. You need to cook, you need to have a garland, you need to have something. But chanting is just by the tongue, which is always there in the mouth. You can constantly serve Krishna by calling out his names. That is with the mind. And the third thing is the mantra must be powerful, which is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And fourth is we practice sincerely so that even if we don't succeed in one life, wherever we go, this chanting process will help us lifetime after lifetime. When we are dead and gone, all of us will never meet again. We will never meet each other again, ever, ever, ever again. It is Krishna's inconceivable mercy in my life that I'm getting all of your association. But once the bodies perish and we go on our own journey as the soul from one place to another, we all will never meet. But what will help us is the times when we sat together and chanted together. That will help us. Prag Janmani Anushikshitam.